All right, so I think we are up and going. At least I think we're up and going. Let me check my book and see if we are up and going. Usually we are. I think so. Yep, we are live on Facebook now. How fun is that? Today is going to be really fun, you guys, in this episode of The Difference Live. Let me make sure I go and share this into a couple other groups. Um, as you guys jump on, please say hi. I'm sure Josh and I would love. I see Shara's on, and uh, I see a other couple people jumping on as well, but we would love to say hi to you. So please say hi to us. Let us know where you are around the world and the country, and um, we'll get this thing going here pretty darn soon. Uh, let's see. It is a share there. So we are good to go. So today I'm really excited to um, to connect with everyone. Last week, if you guys missed the episode with Erica Acuna, you want to go back and catch that. I think that video has been viewed about 10,000 times now. You can go to my uh, YouTube channel and uh, it is uh, it was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. And I think you're going to get a lot of inspiration from it. But today we are with a good buddy of mine. And many of you guys know, uh, I recently put out a book called The 12 Shifts. And um, every day, uh, it's amazing the messages that I get from people who are reading this book. T this morning, I got up uh, early in a, in a friend um, uh, messaged me from Australia. And he said he just finished a book and it resonated with him and another woman um, and also really resonated with her. And then I got a picture of someone who sent me a picture um, of their 20 year old son who had just started to read The Richest Man in Direct Sales. So if you haven't gotten a 12 shifts, uh, definitely go out and get it. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it and paperback, audio and Kindle. So today, there's Amanda. So today we have uh, uh, a good buddy of mine. I met Josh years ago, actually at his house at a 4th of July party. And um, quickly him and his uh, back then fiance, um, now married for, I guess it's been about eight years now. Just about. But uh, just quickly, um, quickly took a liking to them and, um, you know, throughout the years really stayed in touch. I've watched him become, you know, a husband and a father and, um, and just going to do incredible things. And so I invited him on today because about maybe five months ago, and I don't even know if it was that long, you know, Josh had just made some decisions in his life. We met uh, over coffee at a park in Long Beach, California. And he sort of declared some things that he wanted to change. And um, he just had an incredible story of transformation. So Joshua Burton, welcome hey. to uh, The Difference. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This is cool. Um, I, you know, I like, I like doing these talks. I like doing these talks with, um, you know, like-minded people who are just you know, looking to grow, looking to expand, looking to, you know, share their stories. And so this is, to me, it's so necessary. It's so necessary for growth to be able to, um, I don't know, to be able to, to share. Mm -hmm. um, to know you're not alone. Oh. To know everything's, you know, people are heading in the same direction as you. So thank you. Yeah, well, I think people you know um you know get involved with the group that we have going on here and jump on these calls every you know friday is to get inspired and i think it'd be good just to let these guys know a little bit about you and your background and sort of um you know how you got up to this point to where a few months ago you said i'm done with this i yeah. want more for myself and for my life for my health um, physically, mentally, and financially, and then we'll get into how the heck you've been able to do some of the things that you've been doing. But what sort of led up to this uh, point? Who are you? Well, um, you know, I I grew up, you know, in a, in a really stable home. I grew up, you know, Lakewood, California. You know, went to Lakewood High School, and um, early on. 
my parents decided to enroll me in martial arts classes. And, um, you know, as every six year old, you know, looking for some sort of activities, um, I took an extreme liking to it. And I was um, not just that, well, I guess I took a liking to it very quickly. And um, that being a martial artist instilled a lot of a lot of great qualities in me at a young age. Um, you know, we always went by the five rules of the dojo, which was effort, etiquette, character, sincerity, and self-control. You know, um, so those, you know, doing your best and, and, and you know, having good etiquette and manners, um, you know, your character is, you know, what you say, you know, who you are, even when no, be, your, be yourself, even when nobody's looking, be, be good. Um, say what you mean and mean what you say, you know, have sincerity and then being able to control your words and your body. Um, that stuck with me a lot. So, you know, growing up in martial arts, you know, not only physically how it, how it really um, helped me with balance and, you know, my um, strength and, and, and all that stuff. Mentally, it really shaped me. Um, you know, my parents, we, I was 14 <laughs> and my sister was 19 and my parents decided it was a great idea to open up a martial arts school and have a couple of teenagers run it. Um, sounds like a really bad idea, um, but it actually worked for us. And so, um, you know, I took what I learned in martial arts and turned it into um, a business. And we grew our business. We had our martial arts school in Seal Beach, California for, you know, 12 years, um, uh, 11 years. So all throughout high school, all throughout college, um, I was um, a martial arts instructor. I was a sensei. I was a business owner. I was, um, you know, somebody who learned a lot outside of the scope of a normal teenager you know, how to uh, write curriculum, how to be authoritative uh, with, you know, adults. I'm here, I am 17 years old teaching adults, right? Um, and so having to get them to take me seriously, how to project um, confidence, how to learn how people learn and how to relate to them. So I learned a lot of great things when I was younger in my teenage years. Um, and then, of course, you know, once that time came to an end, um, you know, I wouldn't say that a lot of it went away, but, you know, just like with any craft, if you're not practicing it, if you're not doing it, um, you tend to get a little rusty at it, you tend to let some of the things slip by, and, um, you know, they kind of did. You know, I wasn't as active anymore as I used to be. I wasn't as, um, you know, I, I wasn't able to be in that arena of, you know, teaching people and helping people. And so that kind of slipped away from me a little bit, but I found it in other things and other jobs that I was doing, slipping into that role of being a trainer um, because I could relate to people because I, I understood how they learned, you know, by listening to them, I understood how they learned. And then I could therefore relay the information that they needed back to them in a manner that uh, that they could understand. Um, so, you know, having, you know, my young 20, early 20s, I had a few different jobs and, but I was able to do that. Like I, um, I worked uh, alongside a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills, um, you know, uh, assisting surgeries. And so, you know, whenever they bring a new person on, I was the one that was gonna train them. Um, and then I moved to surgery, you know, general surgery at a surgery center. Um, and again, same type of thing, taking on the new person, showing them how it's done. Um, and so that really just, uh, that part has always been a passion of mine, helping people, understanding people. And so I, um, you know, but that physical part of it started to, you know, I wasn't doing martial arts. I wasn't playing tennis like I used to when I was younger. I wasn't doing all those things. I was never the guy that loved going to the gym. I needed 
action sports. I needed something to keep it interesting. Um, and so when that wasn't available to me, you know, my physical health declined, which I'm sure a lot of people go through is when your physical health declines, your mental health declines and vice versa. So slowly, and I do say slowly, over years, that stuff kind of eroded who I was at my core, the helper, the passionate teacher, the uh, empathetic teacher who could really relate to people. And, uh, you know, like Jamil said, you know, he met me eight years ago, you know, um, and Jamil took me by storm. I mean, I remember talking to my fiance after I met him was like, well, I looked at her, I was like, well, that guy was interesting, you know, uh, <laughs> you just had so much to say. And in such, you know, uh, you know, being the host of the party, I was kind of running around everywhere, but just a short time we talked, that's such a huge impression on me. And it reminded me of, oh my God, that's the kind, that's my people right there. I love being able to do that. And so, you know, naturally um, we connected and we were able to, um, helped me out in some ways with my um, physical health. And, um, you know, and then life just kind of took its toll. Again, you know, like you said, marriage and kids and um, it, it broadened, you know, my responsibilities and, you know, shifted things for me. And so um, I, I allowed certain, you know, physical, um, you know, my physical health to kind of decline again. Um, which again, in turn, the mental followed. So jumping back into this with you this year. What I, you... I have a couple of <laughs> yeah. questions. Um, so, so why did you, you said it, your, your physical health started to slowly decline, which obviously affected your mental health. Why, why did, why did you allow that to happen? Like, didn't um, you see it and didn't you feel it? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I don't think at first I really saw that. Um, I didn't, and I think I still don't realize the effect it took on me. Until now, when things are starting to, the engines are starting to fire again, and the awakening is still happening in me. I don't think I saw just how much it was affecting me. Um, unfortunately I didn't, it wasn't like, you know, if you break your leg, you can't walk, you know, of course, how's the broken leg affect you? Well, you can't walk. This wasn't something apparent to me. It slowly has eroded things in me. So the passions that I really enjoyed, the true nature, I think of, you know, God's blessings of, uh, of who I am, um, I forgot. So and that's kind of what I mean by when I say it, it kind of slowly took its toll, it declined, is because that that gradual decline, sometimes you don't even notice you're declining or you're, you know, you don't even notice it because it's so gradual until you end up at the bottom. <laughs> then you look up and go, oh, wow, that was, uh, that was a long way down. I didn't even notice it. So I think that's, you know, I think that's kind of what I mean by that and, and why I didn't notice it is because it was so gradual um, and through no fault of, you know, anybody else's, just mine. Right. Okay. Just mine. Right. Some of the when I met you in July 2012, I had only, I literally had just started health coaching. Right. Okay. So like, and I was still, you know, working full time job. I was brand new as a health coach and you and your wife were getting ready, or Chris, who's now your wife, but at the time your fiance, you guys were getting ready for um, to be married yeah. and you wanted to go on a health journey. Maybe talk right. a little bit about that. Um, you guys obviously did very well, but then you started to say you fell back into to some uh, non-serving habits. So what happened from that time? Take us through that part of the journey. So that's, I mean, that's exactly what happened was, um, you know, the journey I wanted to go on was 
it was, I wanted to lose weight for our wedding, right? And that's what I did. Lost weight, dropped, you know, I think at that time it was like 35 pounds, maybe 40 pounds, I think it was. And um, Christy, you know, I think just a little bit less. But that's, that was my goal. And I accomplished my goal. What I didn't realize was well, there was so much more. There was so much more to it. There were so many layers of muck and grime and clay on top of all this stuff. I just peeled off one layer. Um, those habits that didn't serve me and what I wanted to do was to stay, well, I wanted to stay healthy or I wanted to lose weight. I didn't touch on those. And so the underlying problems were still there. I just masked it with, you know, a few things. But once I stopped those few things, just came right back. All those, all those unhealthy habits, all those, you know, things that weren't serving me um, that I can see now really affected. And, and so it, it, was, it was a journey for a moment. It wasn't a journey for a lifetime. Why do you think, why do you think people do that? Because I've done that before too. You know, I've, I've, I've made a commitment and maybe not just in my physical health, but I say, you know what? Like, I remember when Amanda and I got um, engaged and we're like, oh my gosh, we started to realize how much a wedding was going to be. And we said, all right, we got to save up this amount of money by next year. And so we were laser focused on it and we actually saved it. We never have even come close to saving that much between basically 2008 all the way until I, I started focusing on it again in like 2012. Yeah. So it's like, why do, why do people do that? Why do people say, I'm making a decision to change, but only for like a couple minutes or months and not like forever? I don't, you know, all I can say to that, I, I think I can only speak on that in terms of like instant gratification instead of delayed gratification. You know, we want what's right in front of us. And so we don't think about the long term. We don't think about what it's going to take to be a healthy person. We do what it takes to lose weight. We do what it takes to save money for a certain event instead of saving money for retirement or generating more income so that I'll have that money. Um, it's just instant gratification. And because I think implementing things uh, change in your life, or, you know, if you have to change your routine to save money, um, it's hard. And so when habits are hard to do or to build, people don't do them, they don't stick with them, right? There it is, because it's freaking be hard. And, and that's why people don't do it. Yeah. Because every day requires a certain amount of suffering. And people don't want to feel that. People and don't want to do their own push-ups. There it is. Right? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to do the push-ups necessary. I just want to I just want to have better pecs, that's all. But I don't want to do the push-ups. And I don't want to do it consistently. I'll do it for like a couple of days. Uh -huh. But you want me to do it for the rest of my life? No, nah, no, way. no way. <laughs> so, okay. So what happened? So, so obviously you guys got healthier for your wedding yeah. and then slowly um, the weight started to creep back on. You slowly start to adopt the habits that were easy. Let's just call it what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. But then something changed because you reached out and then we met, uh, what was, what did change? What was that process like? How did you make this decision that, you know, you wanted to start changing, not just physically, but it was like, it was like this holistic change mm -hmm. when we met at the park and you were talking about, um, it was different. It was different. So what and why? Well, I think at that part in my life, um, this was pre-COVID. This was right before COVID 
all that stuff hit. And it was right after my birthday. So I had just turned 41. And, you know, I think it was more so one of those moments. I think a few reasons here is, is what was going on. One was that my life started to be too mechanical and routine, okay? Uh, doing the same things, just running, you know, just, just going through life, going through the motions in life. Um, I wasn't investing into my life. I was going through my life and it was mechanical. You can ask my wife, you know, it was like, hello, are you there? You know, like, are you, you know, and the kids were just, you know, daddy would maybe not want to play with them because it hurt to get on the ground and do puzzles, you know, my knees hurt or, you know, so I've started to realize, you know, why am I not reaching for more? And I think maybe that goes back to what you would ask earlier. Why did, why do people fall off like that? Why don't they, why do they do things for a short period? Because they don't know what they're capable of also. They don't know what they can actually do, right? We're not awake. We're just kind of going through life. So, um, so I felt that happening. I felt like maybe like some sort of mild depression, midlife crisis, something's going on with me that isn't right. And so I needed a change. And, and the only other huge change in my life that had happened when it came to my physical health or whatever was when, uh, you know, you were doing, you were coaching me. And so I said, okay, I need to go back to Jamil. Also, watching you in this past eight years expand and grow and say, that's the kind of person I want to be. I want that same growth. I want that same abundance in my life. I want that same stuff. Give me the magic. You know? And so that was what spawned me is to pick up the phone and go, okay. Let's do this. I'm ready. Maybe I wasn't ready eight years ago for all of this. Maybe I was just ready to lose weight. Now I'm ready. Now I'm going to hit the gas pedal. Because I see what, I see what the, uh, the fruits of, of the labor are. I see the growth. I see, you know, before maybe I didn't see it. Now I see it. You've been there. You've you've taken the road ahead of me, and um, it looks mighty good. And I want to make my own. I want to do the same. So, a lot of that is kind of what spawned me to to pick up that phone again. Um, and it takes courage to do that. Like you know, I I had a talk with one of my clients, and um, I made a post on Facebook something about look, all it takes is twenty seconds of courage. It's all you need. 20 seconds of courage to pick up the phone, the phone, 20 seconds to walk through that door, 20 seconds to say yes to something, 20 seconds to end a toxic relationship. That's all it takes. So 20 seconds of courage yeah. to pick up the phone and say, I need help, Jamil. Let's meet up. Mm. So that's what it mm. took. And that's why I did it, because I finally had the courage. So when when did we meet at the park and what's happened since then? What was sort of your current reality that day at the park? Your son was there. It was awesome. That was um, it was I think it was on a Wednesday. Yeah, so what was, was sort of your current reality then and when was that and what has happened now? So my reality then was I was overweight. I was emotionally uninvested in a lot of what I had going on, a lot of great things in my life going on. I was, I felt stuck. I, well, I'm not gonna say I was stuck. It was my own choosing to be stuck. Um, I was uh, uninspired to grow in myself. Um, I was not 
aware of choices that I was making. Um, and so through, and that was like March, that was March, because it was right after my birthday, right before, it was literally a week before <laughs> everything locked down, because, and I know because everything locked down on my birthday. Oh, no, so we met before then, so we met before, like a week, probably like the 14th, 14th or 15th of March, everything locked down on my birthday, and I didn't even start then. I waited like two months to start. Why? I don't know. I wasn't ready. And I know a lot of people are relatable. That's relatable. I'm just not ready. So, you know, when you're ready, you're ready. So in May, I started um, really paying attention to my choices. Started on our health journey. And I embraced everything this time that, that we have to offer. And immediately it was, I literally woke up one day like that and said, wow, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to, to grow. I'm ready to, because the physical change had already started to happen by one month, you know, it, it, May 11th, I started middle of June. I woke up one morning and said, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm going to kick this up another gear right now today. And I made that decision that day. I'm going to do this. Well, well, why? Why? Because I, I literally spend like eight years trying to discern and figure out how do, where does that come from, right? Because that's whatever that was, I want to give to like everyone in the world. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, that's why I wrote obviously shift um shift number one is you have superpowers mm -hmm. and i know for a fact that everyone does but people do not tap into it and it's that decision that i want to bottle up and literally spoon feed the people so that they will get out of their own damn way and go be yeah. awesome so yeah. was it inspiration was it desperation was it like seeing a movie listening to a sermon was it what was it or or, or, or was it, or was it just, it, it was, and there's no explanation for it. No, I think it was, I looked at myself and what I had done in one month, physically or myself. And, you know, like I said earlier, physical health, mental health, you know, when one starts to you know, go up, the other one follows it. And so I took a look at myself in the mirror and I got out of my damn way. Get out of the way. Here's you, you know, some more of the clay and dirt was washed off of me. And I was starting to see what was underneath and what I had just accomplished. And I said, if I'm able to accomplish that in one month, what else can I do? 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 You make, you make one milestone and then you look to what's possible, what's doable, not just possible, what's doable the next time and next time and next time. And you keep moving your marker up. So that awakening, and it was a figurative and literal awakening because I literally woke up and went, <laughs> I'm going to do this. I am going to do it. And I'm all in. Um, it was, it was, uh, yeah because I know what's capable, what I'm capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I'm capable of doing a lot more, even now, like, I, I'm also a real estate agent. And, you know, now that I'm coaching, and, and doing well at it, and, you know, getting, you know, supporting my clients, and, and how satisfying that is, and, and, you know, you know, the compensation's great on that. And I'm like, yeah, I love doing this. Maybe I don't need to do real estate anymore. Maybe I don't want to do it anymore. And that's maybe a month ago where I was at. I literally have my resignation letter in my draft box for my brokerage. And then I woke up one day and said, wait a second. I don't have to just do this. I can do this also. I can expand my capacity. 
fast because enough. I made that one decision to take charge and to keep going and to move that marker higher and higher. So, you know, and it all starts from that one, that one decision to just, to just start. So, sure. I'll, you know. So when we met at the park, maybe give these guys a clue. Um, what weight were you at then? And what weight are you at now? Oh, when I, when we met at the park, I was uh, 246, 246 pounds in March. And uh, not too long ago, um, well, actually, I keep lowering my goal weight. So I reach my goal weight, but then I lower it. So not only am I moving the marker up, but for my weight, I'm moving it down. Um, I am at, this morning, I weighed in at 176.8. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. So, so I, I, four months. So I, a couple things I want to point out because one, I know that even though you made the decision, the road is not easy and it's not always easy. So I want to know what the difficulties were and have been and how you navigated through them. And then the other question is a question I want to repeat because you and I were speaking privately. And my big thing is why? And I'm like, you live in a great house. You live in a great neighborhood. Josh, Josh is a six figure earner, right? So like he does well financially. I'm like, why don't you just chill out and be okay with being okay? And so I would love to sort of uh, uncover those things. So what is, what have been the difficulties and why didn't you just quit like so many other people would during those difficult moments? And then why don't you just why don't you just chill, man, and be okay with being 245 pounds? And you know you do great as a realtor and in in your career. And and why don't you just be okay, man? Just call it a day. Yeah, I mean, I could do that. Um, but, but where's the fun in that? Where's the growth in that? Where's the where's the reward in just being okay or just I do okay. Um, one of the things I've learned is to have an abundance mindset, a growth mindset, and um, this mindset has given me inspiration to not only just affect my circle, my home, my, my kids, my wife, close family and friends, but to expand on that and to positively affect outside of my circle. Um, I could be okay with my home in Rossmore. You know, this was our dream neighborhood to move to and we did, and that was a huge milestone. But again, move that marker up. So now we wanna remodel our house, okay? So now um, we're, we're continually moving the marker up. We're not just going to say, this is cool where we're at. Why? Because I want to, I, you know, that's, that was just, that's personal stuff. That's personal goals that I have, you know, for, for my family. But for outside of that is, you know, it's like um, Dr. A's, you know, mission and is to reach as many people and transform lives one healthy habit at a time. Um, you know, that mindset there has, has taken its toll, not taken its toll, I'm sorry, but uh, taken root in me to do the same, not only for health, but in my personal, um, you know, my personal aspirations, you know, like you said, we we're speaking earlier um, privately, but like, I want to have different revenue streams different investments, different things, because I want to grow my, my legacy. I want to use that, everything that's going to be, everything that I gain from that to give back and reach farther, affect people farther, positively, of course, affect them. We don't want to affect people negatively. But, you know, that, is, that has become 
that has become my aspirations is to affect people positively so that they understand the awakenings of what's possible. Shift one, get them to realize that you have a superpower. You're limiting yourself. Um, you know, one of my big, um, I guess, mantras, what you want to call them for my clients, my business is dream big, baby. Dream big because we always limit ourselves. And I need people to understand that you don't need to do that. That's, that's silliness to, to limit yourself, to be okay with where you're at. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need, why, why not? Dream bigger. You're capable of it. Live up to your potential. Your God-given gifts, your, your, your talent, you know, the blessings that God has is, is bestowed upon you, you know. And that's another thing is when I, when I had that awakening, it was like the dam of God's blessings just opened up and that waterfall was flowing, just flowing. It was amazing. It was, it was one of those trans, uh, transformative experiences. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of those days that I will just always remember of where things, of, of where my life shifted when it changed. So aren't there difficult days? Aren't there tough moments? Aren't there times where maybe people don't believe in you or hell, maybe you don't even believe in yourself or you just want to eat the, the box of donuts or you don't want to make the calls or, or, or the kids say, you know, I don't know, dad, you're on a, you're, you're on the phone and not, I don't know. There's got to be difficult moments in there and um and i guess my question always to people is if there are difficulties and these are difficulties that make other people quit why haven't you well you know it's it's funny how you worded that there's got to be difficult days there does there has to be difficult days you have to have difficult days for growth to happen but why don't i quit because i'm going back to the fact that I know what's possible, what's doable, what I can do. And these roadblocks are just roadblocks. They're just obstacles for me to go over. Um, and so I don't quit because I keep my goal in mind and because the, the obstacles that get in my way, um, you ever watch those like obstacle courses and people running? Okay, what's that show? Wipeout. Yeah. How many of you have looked at that and got that looks like fun? I want to do that. It's fun when you when you can navigate over obstacles. That's it becomes fun to do. Yeah, bring it, bring a challenge. I'm gonna go right over it. You you have to start with your your. You have to start with your your discipline with your willpower. And that's innate. You either have it or you don't. And then you build on that. I, I tell my clients, look, you, the difficult days, you, you have your willpower and you have your discipline, but they're not always going to be there when you need them. You have mm -hmm. to have the skill set. You have to build the skill set necessary to overcome your obstacles. What does that mean? Going to that, what does that mean, build the skill set? Like what? What have you used? So, for example, when, um, you know, let's take it back to, to our, our, our eating habits. Um, you know, one of the things we learn is uh, one of the resources that we have, one of the skills that we learn is stop, challenge, and choose. Um, we create a pause between the cues or the stimulus of wanting to eat something that doesn't serve our purposes and the actual action or the reward of it. So we create that pause to where we go, wait, pizza does not serve me to get to my goal weight. So stop. So learning things like that, and then, you know, maybe we'll translate that to 
um, making a decision to, I don't know, reprimand your children if they're not listening to you? Do you fly off the handle and yell at them? Does that serve your goals of being a good parent? It gives you that time to stop, think about it, and then go back to, uh, okay, let me count to 10, let me shake it off, let me breathe a couple times. Now listen, son, why I'm asking you not to do that is because, you know, and you give it to him that way. Do I always succeed in that? No, you can ask my wife that. I don't always remember, but I'm always trying to remember. I'm yeah, always yeah. either, I'm aware of it, I'm aware of it, but I'm getting better at it, so I'm growing. And so those are some of the uh, skill sets that you learn to make those choices, to make the right choices. Mm -hmm. Those are the skills that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And I look back at my life and I say, wow, you really jacked it up, brother, because you didn't know how to think. Yeah. And that's the healthy part um, that has revolutionized my life not just my business, it's all, it's all interconnected. I mean, you just said that it's the same skill that you need to have great physical health. Yeah. It's the same skill that you need to build great wealth. Uh, financially speaking, it's the same skill that you need to navigate through marriages, parenting, uh, uh, social relationships. It's all the same. <laughs> There's always going to be a stimulus or an event we have to understand how to have proper responses that are in direct alignment to what our ultimate wants and goals are, which I didn't even know what mine were. I never took the time to even spend that much time with myself and to date myself to even know what I wanted my outcomes to be. I was just like letting life dictate what was happening instead of me dictating what was mm -hmm. happening. Um, and then building those, um, those skills, like you said, heck, I used it this morning, alarm clock went off 530. I was like, bro, I'm so tired. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Stop. Let me, let me stop and be aware of, I call him Stanley, as you know, Yeah. But Stanley is like, bro, just, just chill out. So I need to stop and I need to be aware and I need to be conscious. Mm -hmm. Then I need to choose. What is my response going to be? And is it going to be in alignment to what I want, which is I want to literally set the standard for yeah. how people, how, how, how I think is a healthy way of living all the way around mm -hmm. physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, everything, right? I want to set the standard. So I'm like, okay, well, if I lay in this bed, that ain't going to help me get closer to setting that standard. So now I choose what I want to do, and then I have an outcome that's going to lead me to what I want. So, so I understand. So that's a skill set that you've built, and that's really helped you uh, break through those days to where you don't, where it's hard, where you don't yeah. feel like doing it. You know, and another thing, another um, resource of, of building the skill set is, it's just it's writing things down structuring them you know we use you know fairly commonly we use our structural tension charts where we have our current reality and where our where we want our reality to be and in the gaps we actually fill in the action steps it takes to get there so you know your goal and you know what it's going to take to get there every single day you know and so having it written down seeing it with your eyes and saying, okay, crossing off another line and one step closer. That, that reminds me of what I need to do. It reminds me how close I am. It reminds me how far I am from where I was and how I don't. And it also reminds me where I was. And I don't want to go back there. So all those things, when you see them, those visual cues, it helps remind you. So, um, you know, that's another thing to me that, that really has really, really, really helped um, not quit or not give up. Just being extremely visual with, with my goals and where I'm at and how to get there. Remember, it's 
Um, another one of the things, you know, we always like to say is, you know, if your why or your motivation is big enough, the how you're going to get there is no problem. And so we lay out our how, and it's so it's written down, it's, we're reminded of it. And if you really want it, you'll get there because this is the way to go. Just got to get in the car and go. So what's in store for you? I mean, if you can do all these things since basically March or April, <laughs> what's, 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 what's the future look like for you? What are you, what are you creating? Um, the future looks bright. So I wish I had my sunglasses right on. Right. Put them on. No, um, the future, the future, I, everything. How about that as a simple answer? Everything. What's in the future for me? Everything. Um, everything that I want, everything that I don't know that I want, everything that, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's so limitless right now that um, I see the way to, to do the immediate goals that I want, uh, growing my business and, like I was saying earlier, remodel my house and um, leave my current job and, um, you know, just have that entrepreneur life to where I make my rules, I make my time, I make my own money, I, I do how I want and I run my business how I want. Um, I, that is in my future. I have, um, I see improved relationships. I see strengthened, uh, renewed relationships. Um, you know, I see, um, I see a lot for, for, for my family as far as, as, as where they can go and what they can do. I see great things for everybody um and it's all because i'm awakened to the to the possibilities and the the um not possibilities but the realities of what can be yeah yeah so you guys i knew that it was good and um i think you know josh is just I mean, it's a testament. I, I feel like everyone that we bring on, uh, the one thing that they do is they is they make a decision, and they they simply make a decision, and from that decision, this awakening process is uh is really started to what Josh talks about, and, and I talk about it a lot here in the twelve shifts. You know, eight years ago, I. In this book here, you know, I, I think the one thing that people message me the most about is how open, raw, and authentic it is. But to be honest with you, on social media, on platforms like Facebook, you know how it has the uh, Facebook memories. I never scroll past 2012 because I'm a little bit of, uh, embarrassed about who that guy was. And that guy is part of the story of the guy now, for sure. But it's just my mindset was so poor at a poverty and limited mindset. And, um, and, um, and, and of course, I had a small life um, because of it. And now it's just changed. So Josh, I, I appreciate you for jumping on here and yeah. sharing so open out the grill and uh, giving these guys so many tips and tools that have really helped you transform in such a short amount of time. And I know on behalf of these guys, um, we appreciate it, man. Well, thank you so much. I, I, like I said, I love doing these talks. I think this is important. This is, this is helpful. This is growth right here. And um, yeah, I just appreciate you for all your guidance and everything and, and everybody watching in, in our community is, you guys are so amazing. So thank you. I appreciate it. Well, we'll see you next week, you guys. Um, in the meantime, if you have not going to go pick up the 12 shifts, run to Amazon, get as many copies as you can, share it with everybody that you know that this book is changing lives. And we'll keep bringing uh, inspirational stories every Friday. And uh, we'll see you uh, very soon. Have a great weekend. And um, 
reach out and help someone transform and live a better life. Josh, thanks again. We'll talk to you guys.